rooms here. So, I want to try, yes. to try, to articulate this theory of our, or I'll just say my, this is my relationship with cats, has taken on an uh, element of the transcendent, or as some would say, the divine. I, I'm re-divinifying cats. You are a kitty, and I am a turtle. You are very, very magical. And wonderful and good. There have been civilizations that thought of cats as divine, magical, religious. The ancient Egyptians, for example, but I think there's been many civilizations who did this, because how can you help it? They're just so clear, they're clearly gods. Or a window to the, the divine through their eyes and their purrs and their magical furs, and just their presence. They're just so special. And now, uh, I want to bring that back. And I have some, I wouldn't say arguments. I'm not really invested in what you think about cats. Some people are incredibly annoyed by them. There's certain dogs with certain dispositions that just annoy the, the living F out of me. Cats are, are more my temperament. Anywho, this is Mama Kitty. And Mama Kitty is sort of a deity in my life because Mama Kitty is consistently metaphorical in that I don't get to decide when I get to be with Mama Kitty or when she will accept me and when we get to have moments such as this. It's entirely up to her. All I can do is kneel before the altar of the magical kitty and then hope that God shines favorably upon my soul. And in this moment, she has, and it's because I'm very, I've never sat lower around Mama Kitty than I do right now. Because usually I sit down over on this thing over there, it's more elevated, you know, so I, that's the thing, you can't be above, you cannot make even the subconscious suggestion that you are above your Lord, right? I'm not suggesting that cats are gods in the sense that they are lucid of their deityhood and that they control the weather. I'm not saying that everything unfolds to the will of Mama Kitty or, or any cat, but I find them incredibly significant these days. And, and here's why. I'm going to try to summarize this. There's a bunch to this. So initially our relationship with the cat was predator prey. And we weren't the predators. Saber toothed tigers used to eat humans. Uh, prehistoric man died in the teeth of many a cat. I'm a kitty! Here she comes. Do, 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 do. She gets to decide. And now I am worthy again. You know? So, anyway, they used to hunt and kill us. So they used to be the bringers of our doom. Uh, or perhaps just our death. Perhaps death is not doom. Perhaps death is the exploding of the dream. You know, I've heard it called the shedding your mortal coils. Re releasing the, the chains of, of mortality, of, of humanhood, of being confined to a body, to biology. Uh, I've heard it described uh, by someone who died and came back that death is like is like being held underwater for a period of time and then when you break the surface and take that first breath of relief it's just like whoa what was that you ever wake up from a from a, a thorough I have nightmares I have really thorough nightmares I have sleep paralysis I have what I would call night terrors I get terrorized by my own subconscious sometimes and I wake up and I'm and I'll be relieved it's like oh just this because you know, my life is relatively comfortable in fact just go ahead and say that I slash we we got it pretty good we're, we're not being hunted by saber-toothed tigers for one we get to pet cats this is what I'm saying so what what once used to hunt us and try to murder us with its fangs well maybe not murder because it was the intention was to devour us but <laughs> there was cats were trying to eat us and did successfully for a while but then we got the, the tool making the weaponry 
that now has it so very few humans die in the teeth of cats. Uh, from what I understand, tigers are still killing folks out there. There's some predatory cats, mountain lions. They, you know, they get it in from time to time, but it's a, it's a rarity because we have assumed the role of the dominant species of the planet. And it's not because of our size or our frightening appearance. It's because we got we're these clever thumb monkeys and uh, guns. Uh, before that, spears and melee and missile, bow and arrow. You know, we got it. Anyway, there's not much contest as to who controls the governments. But that's another wonderful thing about cats. They don't... I love that I can get so wound up sometimes in the stuff of humanity and geopolitics, socio-cultural momentums and movements and stuff. But I got this real I got really good friends in my life who don't care about any of it. They don't even understand and they are cats. Lion kind. You sort of have a similar coloration and face. Is what I would imagine a saber-toothed tiger. I've never been in the presence of a saber-tooth. Never even been in the presence of a tiger other than a zoo, and it was far away. But I understand that you were once the beast that hunted us, and now you are the friend and God which we worship. And I can access the transcendent through hanging out with cats <laughs> particularly this one because mama kitty and i have been through some stuff together when i first started coming to this magical castle in, in the city of the detroits uh mama kitty wouldn't come near me and i just like i could see her face and i knew that she was wonderful and magical and i wanted to pet her but i wasn't in a place mental emotionally psycho spiritually whatever I wasn't I was not in a place where I was and now I'm gonna use hippy dippy cloud flower into bro language here but like I wasn't resonating at a frequency where that was attractive or even approachable to her so you cannot take for granted nor may you initiate the approach just have to be open and accepting of the will of the special magical kitty. Has to let the magical kitty come to you, yes. You're so special. If I'm ever in a hurry and I see Mama Kitty, because I've had I've lived with cats before, and I could just be in a hurry and just be like, okay, I'm just gonna get get some pets in, I'm just gonna connect with you real quick, just hey, and then carry on my day walk out the door you know that's a jerk move because the cat doesn't understand that you got stuff to do it's like oh my human friend is is interacting with me oh that was short and kind of insincere uh what was what was that about uh you know i've, I've had those exchanges with domesticated cats but mama kitty is a city kitty she don't have time for that She's living her life. She's truly free. She's truly free yet she keeps coming back here. Because, well, there's practical, pragmatic purposes for her returning here. She gets fed here. Uh, there's magical turtles and humans that love her and, and show affection toward her. But that affection cannot be decided upon by the human. One can only offer an invitation. So anyway, back to... That went off on a tangent. They used to kill us, cats. They used to eat us. And then we worshipped them as gods. And now we're in this place where something that I think that it, it... It's difficult to be reminded of the divinity of the internet because it gets so weird and novel and just goofy and zany and obscene and... Trolling is, uh... Humor is incredibly important on the internet. And cats, cats are hilarious, are they not? There are some cat videos that just, in any mood I'm in, just bring, bring me back to sanity. Um, so they used to kill us, then we worshipped them, and now... It's like we've tamed the beast of ourselves. 
to the point where that which used to seal our doom No. Should that be a thing? Anyway, cats. Particularly that cat. I'll leave you with this. I don't get to decide when Mama Kitty wants to be petsted. And I don't get to tell Mama Kitty to remain. She is free to go. And I imagine if and when that day comes, it will make me sad. But Mama Kitty is free to go, and I feel the same way about human beings, I feel the same way about uh, romantic relationships now, in no ways, but everybody's free to go. Everybody's free to stay. Um, and there is a thing where we can negotiate agreements to stay even when it feels weird. But I value freedom now more than comfort. And I loved Mama Kitty, even though I don't know how long I will have her in my life. But I will always remember, I will always remember, remember who she was and what she meant to me. Mama Kitty taught me how to be an invitation. Do so you just... Exist exactly as he wishes to. And I'll just be here with his you. You're so magical.